Hello, everyone. I am Mark Skinner. I'm here with Ken Nelson and Greg Claycorn. We are the three Black Pratt grads. And every couple of days, we talk about photography. And these photo talks are based on the long history that each of us have had with the art and science of photography, both digital and analog. Today, we are going to be talking about communicating an idea. Communicating an idea is different from your intention in one respect, and that you have an intention to take a photograph if you are just capturing something, but sometimes communicating an idea means it's something you've planned far, far, far in advance of actually taking the photo. And so what we're doing tonight is we're talking about that, and I'm gonna go first, and Ken's gonna bring up the first photo for us. And what we've done, and what I've done, is I have created a faux ad for photography program. It says, learn fashion photography at the amazing School of Art in New York City. And of course, the website, well, at least the website a few days ago was a blank website. Hopefully no one has purchased it since I created this two, three days ago. And it says, not asinic, not asinic. It's ASA, like the old fashioned uh, ISO NYC.com, and 555 It's a dummy uh, telephone. Now, in this particular photo, I'm using a, excuse me, in this particular image, I'm using a photograph that I created and some text to communicate the idea that you can. Uh, learn photography if you go learn fashion photography specifically if you attend this specific school it doesn't really exist there are some programs that do have fashion photography as part of their uh curriculum uh, i know fit is one most schools have uh fine art some have commercial art and you can get all sorts of uh education in photography but in this particular image i have photographs of models and they're kind of sort of on one sheet of paper as if they're in an old-fashioned contact sheet. And you'll notice that there's a camera. And I've used all these elements to communicate the idea that if you call this school or go to their website, you can get information about how to learn how to photograph fashion photography. Now, you'll notice that the camera is really kind of a rangefinder-style camera. It's actually a mirrorless camera. But these photos aren't made with that kind of camera. Most of the fashion photos that one sees is made with something more like a DSLR, something more like this. And you're going to find that uh, that type of camera is more for reportage, but it does communicate the idea of photography. And if you go to the next photo, Ken, we've removed the text and you can see we've got various fashion photos, various portraits. They're all kind of together. It's not quite a contact sheet because that would just really read as a very old program. Uh, but I wanted to give a sense of what photography is with you by using that other camera. The problem with using a DSLR is, well, frankly, it's probably too large to do what I wanted to do. This is the same format as a Facebook banner. And uh, this is not the greatest ad, but it does communicate the idea of a photographer. And when you put the text there, it tells you to learn photography. And that's really all I had to say, is that you can use a photograph to communicate an idea. It's done all the time in advertising. Uh, it's in, in, in very specific ways where people uh, make a point to speak specifically communicate a certain idea. And in this case, I'm communicating the idea that uh, you are in uh, the office or the home of someone who is a photographer who has already taken photographs. And you too can be that individual, sort of a glimpse into uh, the type of work that they do. Even though the tool that's illustrated is incorrect, it still communicates the idea that it's photography. And that's really it. Okay, I I think I had a question, but <laughs> right. Well, I, well, my only I, question I, is I, about so my only question is about the 
because when I when I look at an image, right, and one of the things I do is the things that are out of focus, I really don't pay attention to. So in this particular instance, I really didn't pay attention at all to the uh, the contact sheets. What I saw was the typeface, and I saw the camera. I right. really and didn't I pay sure, attention to the contact yeah. sheets. And I made sure to blur. And I'm glad you brought that up, or to Boca, the uh, to blur the uh, images of the people for this particular uh, photograph. Uh, did that in camera, and I did that so that when I put the text over the image, you really would pay more attention to that big, bold red type with the drop shadow, as opposed to uh, getting involved into really investigating, you know, what the models look like. In this particular instance, all of them together like that, uh, slightly blurred, it just shows you what types of photo it sort of not even shows you it just sort of hints at the type of photography that you'll be able to uh create um after you've called this wonderful school okay so my next question is with all the knowledge and history that you have and all the background that you have in advertising photography what would be the amount of time that an average a person would spend looking at this ad to try and understand what it's conveying would they spend 30 seconds with it, a minute with it, to, to understand, if they're interested? Because I, what, I would, be the, what would be the well, thing they'd see? Well, all right, what I would you, you think they'd see first? If, if the person isn't interested, they may look at it, they may look at the people to kind of see if they can see what the people uh, really look like. They may look at the camera and try to discern what kind of camera it is, you know, just, oh, okay. And they'll turn the page, or excuse me, not turn the page, or they might click on something else. Uh, if they are somewhat interested, uh, they might start to read the yellow text and find out more information in the smaller text. If they are very interested, they may see this particular ad as the, the, the message that spoke to them, that said everything that they understood about photography before taking a real photographic course in a, in a photo school or online or anything like that. And so uh, it depends on the, uh, the audience. But I would say the average person, they might read the text, look at it, and if they know someone who's interested in photography, they might forward the link or they might send the uh, image or they might tell someone at yeah. dinner, oh, yeah. yeah, I saw this thing, uh, the school, the, uh, the, uh, the amazing art school of New York, amazing school of art in New York. They teach fashion photography. You said you were wanted to be a fashion photographer. So that's the kind of message this is. It's uh, very heavy handed, but at the same time, it communicates maybe a few seconds but okay. that's all it takes. Yeah. You, you said that this was, I'm sorry, uh, a YouTube banner or was it, I'm sorry, a uh, Facebook banner? Right. It's the, same, it's the same size as a Facebook banner. It's the same size as a Facebook, which, which, which actually... Which we know is XPAN. You know, it's the Hasselblad uh, XPAN format. Right. The Facebook banner is the same format. Which would some ways also fit a, a Subway banner. Yes. But I don't, I don't know the exact dimensions, but I'm taking your word for it. Yeah, I would figure that, yeah, you have, it's usually a panoramic format, and I think uh, given some white space around it, you could fit it into a uh, a subway banner of some sort. And so that's the reason why I would say, yeah, it, uh, a subway banner with nowhere else to look, you'd be looking at the subway banner for almost your whole trip, unless you got, right, well, <laughs> unless right, you got a newspaper you know, to read. You, you've, you've seen them, where you're talking about, right? right the, what do you call the School of Philosophy, and yeah. there's a couple of others, uh, yes. business schools, and yes. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, my my question is like it's kind of like a uh, anti ad almost because I mean it's like uh, uh, an ad for food without showing the food. You know. I mean. Well, if you're looking yeah. to well, you're well, like in the you, idea of the anti, you would, right. you would entice your viewer with beautiful pictures of beautiful men and women. And say, you know, put them in funky clothes, and then say, "Hey, how'd you like to learn, you know, fashion photography by showing beautiful people?" Here, you're not showing the people at all; they're out of focus. Like, well, to me, I, I hear what you're saying, but to me, it's not really about the models in this particular image. In this case, 
it's it's about I'm talking about what you're trying to communicate in this particular case it's about the perspective of, of the prospective student and i know for me whenever i look at any advertising for any curriculum the idea is you know you know what will the, what will i be using what will my lifestyle be like what what it's always about a little bit of a future even if it's uh what the educational life what the life of the student will be like will i be typing on a computer you know will i be uh, uh working uh in a lab it, it doesn't matter the idea is that you will be here and in this case because i had limited resources the idea is this will be your perspective yeah. you know you will see a camera on one side and photographs that you've already done on the other but you you know you know that you know you're living this life as a you know, fantastic fashion photographer. Well, yeah, and I'm going to go with the idea that if you have any history in looking at old photo magazines, this will fit right in with those old photo magazine ads. Yeah, because the, the, <laughs> the presentation they... is, is dated. Because normally you say fashion photography, you're expecting, you know, strobes going off, makeup artists, you know, a lot of action, a lot of energy. This is like learn fashion photography or we will detain you and torture you. <laughs> but I also, no, 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 but here's Greg, here's what I think. These are one of those ads that perpetually run in the same magazine month after month, year Truth. after year for the same school. Yeah. So they're not apt to change because if they, if they get 20 student applications for this, for the month, it's done its job. <laughs> Okay. Right. And, and in this case, on a website, you know, you would get yeah. thousands, you know, you get thousands, poten yeah, yeah. potentially. Like I'm saying, I'm not saying it's the greatest ad in the world, but I'm just saying it's communicating the idea. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, I think it says yeah. what it's yep. supposed to say. Yep. And yes, this photo was created for this particular talk. Okay, cool. But I, but I think you make great, great points, uh, uh, Greg, that it's, you know, that it's not showing you all the different things, but that can be trendy. You know, if you have someone with a sparkler in front of them and you're photographing them. Fashion photography is trendy. Right. But I think Ken made the point that this is the kind of ad that just runs consistently. So you want to be able to keep continuity in your advertising. You don't want to have to creep commissioning new work every month or every few months because, you know, it's changed a, a lot. You know, whatever is in trend has changed yeah, so much. In, yeah. In schools are schools. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That all we got for that? That's it. So I guess at this point, we are ready to go to, I think it's Ken, you're next. I am next. And my ideas are a little bit different. <laughs> I'm going to Yay. first share because I want to set this up. Um, ideas are really tricky things. Um, because ideas are understood in a split second. And um, so <laughs> they are there. Yeah. And it's really for in it, within an image, they're, they're, they're understood within a split second. So um, I just wanted to uh, sort of drop the, the screen off for a second so I can bring this image to you and actually get your opinion on what the idea about the photograph is. So it's not more about me telling you what it is. It's me asking you, what do you figure it is? And it's a simple idea, so don't get too complex about it. Once you see the image, just let me know what you think the idea is. And it's a very simple idea. Blackout. Oh. Uh. You're seeing it on your phone, so it's going to be relatively small. So I apologize for that. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Mm. Right. Uh, I, I see reflections, <laughs> but I'm trying to think. What is the idea? Well, uh, the idea is that we live in a multiverse, and that there's reality, and then there's this other reality that's in mirrors and in reflections. Okay. Um, okay, Greg. First impression. Not impressions, ideas. Oh, sorry. What do I think it's about? What am I? What are you communicating? What am I communicating?
I don't know, man. I'm I'm loving it. I don't know okay. what it is you're saying, but I like the abstract qualities of it. I like the um, almost the lack of focus. It almost reminds me if you guys seen that seen that movie uh, Inception, you know, where they uh, go into dreams and they bend. Bends, yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. like what yeah. Ken. You'll be looking at the ceiling, and it actually be the ground. Yeah, I re- yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I like the multi, multi, like Mark was saying, like the multi-dimensionality of it. Mm-hmm. It could be about time. It could be about space. It could be about the blending of both. I, I, I just like it. It's a, okay. It's, my eye enjoys looking at it. Okay. I um, think... almost wish it didn't have that sky on the left side so that your eye is forced to stay in that lower area. That's but, okay. Uh, That's okay. So what happens when I show you the second image? Ooh, that looks like it's straight out of the Twilight Zone <laughs> or post-apocalyptic. Okay. okay. So once you have the two images together, you have a concrete notion of what the idea is. And again... It's a simple I idea, <laughs> right? Don't I said don't overthink this. Okay, okay. Because it's not. You could actually say the idea in one word. Reflections. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's all it is. That's all it is. A simple idea, right? We, we, we put so much effort into trying to understand images that the images come become too complex to understand because you're not. They're simple. But but it's I think a that's a function I think that's a function of who we are and what we do. I don't think that's well, a, I don't think that well, mo- I don't think most people spend that much time digging into pictures. Well, right. They probably don't. But right. And they probably think the song the same lines, which is, oh, cool reflection. That's it. <laughs> right? And that's all that it's meant to do. You know, quick reaction, boom, right? We can we can talk and we can sort of, um, I forgot the word. Uh, we can sort of, you know, Reflect. art speak. We can art speak our way to death on this on what it means. But the fact is, and all in all, it's it's you know, it's about reflections. And like you said, when then when you start to think about the way you feel about the reflections, that when it becomes deeper and your thoughts on what you were feeling, what you were thinking about and how it makes you feel is the second part of it. But the first part is really the idea. Or, right. The, the thing that makes you think about either the what it means or what it means to you. Visual. Visual well, excitement. Okay. Reminds me of it's very kaleidoscopic. Yes, exactly. That's that is the second part of the idea. Uh, yeah, and that multiverse thing that you're talking about is again something I'm going for. This is part of a series I've been working on for a long, long time. Um, I haven't been working on it with consistency, and um, I've only been working on it really definitively over the last like three months. Really going out there and, and and looking at things and trying to get things similar like this. Uh, this was taken in uh, this was taken six years ago. So I've been working on this project since about well, I'd say eight to ten years ago. Yeah, I like That's this one. Images. I like this one uh, more than the first than the other one. Excuse me, the second one. Uh-huh. I like yeah, more than this one. Yeah, this one. I I, I know I know who your influence is on this. <laughs> I mean, it's just. I, you know, you, I, I know, I, I know where you're going with this one, but I think the other one, say it. I think the other one is more uh, sweet Genesis. I think the other one's a little bit more you going in there and just taking that pick. I'm sorry, say that again. I think the other one's more you. Uh, okay. Meaning more from you. This one is a study in a style. I did. I know. I know exactly. Who's you know, who's work he has influenced this? Who's the style? Oh, Joel Meyerowitz. Joel Meyerowitz. Hmm, maybe. Okay, those we long, talked about him over the last couple shadows, of months. Those long Fifth Avenue shadows. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I was That's cool. say so you put uh, him with uh, Ernest Frank. Hayes together and you kind of got like what's going on. If there was an influence, I was going to say either Robert Frank or Lee Friedlander. But uh, okay. I, I kind of like the consistency in his in his vision in in this i don't see an influence necessarily other than i mean you can't you can't separate new york photographs of new york from famous new york photographers because they've pretty much captured 
you know, every just about every lighting situation, and every yeah. every uh, you know locale. But I think he's saying something different. I think Kenny is saying something different than those guys were. I, I am, I am, and it's funny because when I, 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 and I'll just give you a little bit of thing about this. Um, I was looking through this last week or the last time we talked about it. And for me, I when I think about this, I only I and I if I were to associate this with anyone in terms of photographers from past history, I'd say more the Thor- Dorothea Lang, and maybe even uh, an atmosphere. Um, oh man, it was on my it's just on my mind the other day. Um, but Dorothea Lang was one uh, because it has to do with the city streets, um, and I I forgot who it was who the other one was. I'm sorry. But that's all I got. Okay. I like the, I like I like the swagger the on this guy. He's got, I like the swagger, his uh his stride. He's got quite a stride and then the uh the the hat on the other side. It's very yeah. it's very noir at the same time it's daylight. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, as far as the time of day, the choice of the time of day, I, I like the way that you've made the literal actual street you know, gave it character, you know, by lighting the street yes. and then framing it so that you see the actual street. Yeah. The concrete has a, you know, texture and, you know, feel to it. That That's really cool. Now, why yeah. is it, what, there's like a ref, orange refract, refraction on the left side and a blue refraction on the right side. Is that, is that, that is, image? image? No. You, right. Now, I'll explain a little bit. When you, you're just looking through a window. And so the window has doesn't have 100% reflectivity. It has about 50%, 60% re- reflectivity. So okay. you're actually seeing through the window. The color's okay. coming through the window from the inside. And on the blue okay. that you're seeing is he's holding a hand. He's holding a plastic bag of some sort. Okay. All right. No worries. Just no. Right. There's a lot of layers here. Yeah. There's a lot of layers. And okay. that's I the like thing it. about it that I've been okay. really fascinated with is that we're in the concrete and glass jungle. And what's interesting about, and I'll, I'll give away some of what I'm thinking, is when we pass these things all the time, and some people even look at themselves in the window, but the window only has a certain sense, a certain reflectivity. But once you look at the window from uh, an extreme angle, such as the way this is presented, it becomes more reflective. It becomes almost 90% reflective. So it becomes a, a mirror, a mirror, you know, a mirror into another place. And so that's why you get that sort of idea or notion about um, uh, another universe, alternate universes. And I, and I like that play mentally as well. So. Well, you know, it's funny, you'd, you'd say the glass and steel. One of the things that's very interesting about that, and I just thought of this when you said it, is that that was one of the big uh, ideas about what made a camera and photography different from painting is that it was created with glass and steel in some <laughs> cases glass steel and leather but primarily <laughs> glass and steel and yeah. the, the fact that new york city in particular had all these buildings that were made of glass and steel uh and concrete with uh, people walking around in them it's a very uh you know there's a symbiosis in the in the tool used and the uh, the subject matter that uh, I think street photography is what illustrates that best. I think. Yeah. And, and some and some uh, some fashion photography, it's on the street. No, I hear you. That's that's what I was. That's what I was. That's why. Well, why I was thinking uh, Lee Friedlander because he okay. does a lot of street and a lot of reflection, <laughs> a lot of glass work, and his perspective shifts. And I like the way you exploited that. Yeah. But uh, also the fact that you made the street you know tactile visually tactile I, I, I really enjoy this the way you capture that and if i were to associate this with anyone i would have to say that it would most likely be the person or the one because because i took this seven years ago right six years ago and as i was looking through a book that i recently purchased i realized that this photographer photographed a similar style in a similar way using a similar technique in 1953. So Ernst Haas did this in color right. in 1953. All right. All <laughs> I was right. close. I, uh, said, I, said Haas, I said Haas and right. Meyerowitz smooshed yeah. together. Okay. So, but, it's good. but it's good. I think I mean, it's definitely yours. Certainly the, the other one uh-huh. I really, really, really like a lot. Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys. Okay. That's all we got for me. All right. Well, all right. So we are up to... Greg, Greg's communicating an idea. 
Yeah, just, uh, you know, I mean, I would say just as a premise that all all art, and I hate to say all or nothing, but most art is about communication. You're trying to say something about something, you know, how the world impacts you and your interpretation or, um, you know, or you're trying to, you know, if you go into the advertising side of it, you're trying to influence the public to, to take action to do something. Um, um, but uh, as far as communicating an idea, you know, everything, I will say everything, boy, here we go in the absolutes. I'm doing a lot of absolutes today. I apologize, Mel. But um, everything affects everybody different. You know, that's kind of what I, what I enjoy about, you know, movies and um, most art, you know, show 100 people one image, they don't come away with 100 different things for the most part. You know, they, everybody processes it uh, their own way. Um, I've been, you know, kind of in a place where a lot of things have been transitory and, um, you know, it's, it, it's a lot, a lot of things going on. I'll just go because I got one, 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 one thing to say and I was trying to really wrap my head around the idea of communicating an image without it being, you know, uh, advertising related because I think, uh, I'm not sure Ken so much, I know Mark, Mark and I both went to a, uh, advertising junior college and uh so we kind of um have some training in that as aspect of it but uh, i've had a more um uh you know ken what you, your background like visual arts school of visual arts and such mm -hmm. right then so yep. you know hit the way his approach to uh visual information is a little bit more uh I'll say loose, but a little bit wider than, you know, advertising where it's like, okay, you have this, here's a product, here's your audience, make the two meet, <laughs> you know. So um, I guess where, where I'm coming from, it's like uh, interpretation is kind of up to the viewer. So you can, you can put up, I just have one, I'm going to be short and sweet today. So I got one image and it says... Terminal entrance, you know, and you got some Latin motifs and such. I wanted to have some people in there, but then I thought about it. I was like, nah, let the eye be the entrance and the exit. But it, for me, it just kind of felt like divergent concepts, you know, because you're entering and ending. <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute, terminal entrance. Uh, I wasn't really sure what to do with it. I know it's like, do I want to enter a terminal or once I enter the terminal, is it a new beginning? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> so I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to do. So as far as expressing an idea, it's somewhere you want to go. But do you really want to go there like that? You know, so I, I wasn't really sure. Uh, visually, I mean, at first it, I was like, this guy, doggone it, these guys have come up with another idea that I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. But when I saw this one, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna roll with this one because it, uh, I mean, on, on the surface, it's a very straightforward, you know, you know, terminal entrance. But, I mean, it, it just seemed kind of... Uh, Ant antithetical, in a way, but I think Greg, I think only people with with inquisitive minds, inquisitive thoughts and ideas would Wait, would again. come to that. Wait, I'm getting a whole bunch of notifications. Go ahead. Only people. Okay. Would... Go ahead. I think people with inquisitive or curious minds would second guess or even sort of guess or play around with syntax on word okay. usage. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Good. right, I, I think anyone who, I mean, literally is here understands it, so therefore I don't think they're going to play with it. But if they're a writer or some yeah. creative, they might. They uh, might. Uh, if you just came out of a movie called Inception... <laughs> Yeah, it's stuck in you, my head. I love you, that movie. You'd, you'd probably go and look at the two words and say, 
Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're just going to catch your 430, then different story. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I mean, you're, you're, talking, you're talking about literacy, basically. You're talking about how many definitions for the word terminal do you know? And so there's two that we're talking about. You know, one is the end and one right. is uh, a, a, a hub, a, a transportation hub. So in this case, you know, Greg has decided to be very mysterious yeah, with that yeah. open door and yeah. uh, terminal entrance. Yeah. And so you're just alluding to hey, there's more to it than there might be, than, than yeah. the eye can see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Was, that, was that the 2001 where, where when he goes to, you know, check out to the next level, he's just in that big room with the whole screen of flowers and, you know, was that 2001 or was that Soylent Green? I think it might have been Soylent Green. Mm. Oh, yeah, where Saul goes to the uh, the room to uh, expire. To check out, yeah. I was, I was, I was thinking images of like this terminal yeah. entrance. Actually, he was, he was in one of the, he was actually on a, uh, oh gosh, I forgot what they call that, but he was on a sort of a gurney. And then uh, he, had a, he had a 360 view of uh, flowers growing. And right, right, right. And he was like, "Whoa!" Like they just, you know, shot him up and said, you know, but, "But the idea, you know, the terminal, it, it's, it's well, the end." But, well, but it's, I, I only have one question end, about this particular where, photo. Though, it's right. Where you where you where you start a journey at the terminal. So right. yeah, but I only have, I only have one yeah. photo. One question about this. Go ahead. You know, because this photo has sky and foliage in that left hand corner. Uh, as much information as you have about the terminal, I don't see uh, any way for me to not pay attention to that nearly perfect blue sky and the foliage that's on the left side. Even though I read it and I see the door and the door is bright, uh, but then what happens is because the wall has an element that's brighter than the doors, my eye starts going towards the, the wall. And then once I go to the wall, I'm looking at the at the sky. Exactly. That that was that well the framing was intended. I wanted the the um you know the Latin caricatures you know in the traditional garb and the sky to be a lot more inviting <laughs> than that dark those dark doors. Because it's like I don't want to go Everything in my my psychosocial watch too yeah. many TV shows brain says, don't go in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll yeah. I'll give you that. I wish the door were a little more open, but otherwise, I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess now that I think about it a little bit more, the murals are more of a sort of a a lighter a lighter uh, a lighter thing for me to sort of ingest in terms of. Um, serenity or mm. you know thinking above instead of below you know yeah this life is up there yeah life, if you mm. wanted you know life the, yeah. the sky the people in colorful outfits there's a festivity thing there's you know the yellows and browns are more you know earth tones and life tones than freaking green and black like yeah this. Mm. yeah yeah, and I think Mark said it, that the doors and everything within the this building is you can't see it because it's just blacked out. It's exactly. really mysterious. It's mysterious. Absolutely. So it's like what what is it trying to, you know, what are you trying to communicate? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. The door is open for you. <laughs> yeah, but do you want to go through there? It, it's, it looks like a the, the setup for a twilight zone. I'm expecting Jordan <laughs> Peele to be standing on the other side of that I, door. I concur. I believe that too. Yep. <laughs> That's all I got. Thanks for this. You guys, please come on. I, every time you say something and you say, okay, we're going to talk about this, I dread it, but <laughs> it really makes me think. So, yeah, please keep it going, folks. <laughs> okay. So, that's it, everybody? Is that, is that where we're, we're done? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. Okay. Well, we have been. And yeah, we still are. Black <laughs> <laughs> we have been the three Black Pratt grads. We have been speaking uh, very briefly about communicating an idea, just communicating an idea through photography. 
This is what I really should have said. And I think we've all done that in different ways. I am Mark Skinner. I am here with Greg Cleghorn and Kenneth Nelson. Keep and shooting. Talk to you next time.